Hey folks, thanks for tuning in. Back at it again today with a supplementary video on my Talon SS, the regulated Talon SS. I've gotten a lot of questions on this gun and uh, the very first video I did on this channel was really bad audio quality because of the Chinesium camera I used. But um, today we're gonna take a little bit of a deeper look into just this Talon. I had sold the Condor, so that's gone. But uh, I wanna give you a little bit more about the performance of it what it can do in the cold. It's about 30 degrees today. Um, sun just went down, so it might actually have gone a little bit lower in temperature, but we'll shoot a target at 25 yards, get some chrono readings, and then I'll take you through a kind of close-up look at what I've got going on here. Okay, let's get it going. Today I'll be shooting the 18 or so grain Barracuda Hunter Extreme pellets. Let's see if we can get some chrono readings. I haven't shot this in months, and this is my first shot, so let's see about this. Seven fifty-two. Seven forty-seven. Seven again. Seven forty nine. I think I same hold that one. Seven forty nine again. I mean, I'm shooting pretty lights out. The first two shots. I may have pulled, but all of them are right in the bowls. Oh yeah, this thing's dead on. Great little testing gun, and since I've got the carbon fiber tank, 4,500 PSI, 45 cubic inches with the regulator, I'm getting like 125 shots per fill. Seven forty five. Seven forty five again. Seven forty five again. Just super consistent. Seven fifty six on that one. Now these are non sorted pellets that I just have sitting in this pouch, so they get banged around a little bit. Seven fifty nine. Should have just stuck to one target and stopped bouncing around. Maybe I'll call the next one. So, all right. So there's one untouched black sticker with the orange center. Let's see if I can stable up and get that right in the orange. Yep. I'll shoot another one at the far right that I've been working on. All bullseye so far, or close to it. There's another one through one of the same holes, 747 feet per second. I'm running out of pellets here, so take a couple more. All right, the left of the three big ones. 745 feet per second. And let's do the orange small sticker, right in the black. 
right through the black blew it off. 749 feet per second. As you can see, this thing is just super consistent. And I'm not pushing it hard. I want it to be lower velocity. I'm still getting over 20 foot pounds with it. But uh, it's great for small game and lower, uh, you know, where you don't want over penetration, like, like less range in the front yard or something like that. So sometimes my dad uses this gun too. All right, let's try to put one on the far left big boy. All right, I got to 17 shots before my camera inexplicably shut off. I don't know, maybe the cold or whatever, but um, I did screenshot on the FX Chronograph app my stats from that, so it'll show you standard deviation and spread and everything. So we'll put that up now on the screen so you guys can check that out. And then we'll go into a more uh, in-depth look at the actual component tree of this Talon. Okay, as promised, we're going to go through the actual componentry of this Air Force rifle. So first of all, Air Force Air Guns is just about the most based air gun company you could ever go with. So please support them, buy their stuff. All of their products are amazing, <clears throat> super, super reliable, and almost maintenance free. So to get into it, what I have on this talent is something you might not be able to get anymore. Um, I say that because I'm using a JDS Airman adapter here, and I don't think he's doing business anymore. You might be able to find his number online and give him a call and see if he has any of these. Last I checked, there was a couple of them on eBay, but that was months and months ago, so you're probably not going to get that anymore. But what we have going on here is a, this is a Ninja 45 light paintball tank. So it's a 4,500 PSI tank, 45 CIs, cubic inches of volume in there. And then we have a modified regulator, which plugs into the, um, the JDS Airman adapter, and then that gets the Air Force valve. And this is a Condor valve, and that gets plugged into the JDS Airman. So, um, number one, probably for a regulated setup, you're going to want to go with the Condor valve because you want to be able to get the most flow possible. <clears throat> and then what also would help, which I do not have, is the ring lock kit. So you could, oops, sorry about that. So you could change the um, valve head on here to either constrict it or open it up more. So that's something that you're going to want to do. So how did I do this? Um, I'm going to give you two methods. I'm going to give you kind of what I did, and this relates to what you can do. Let's actually right now we'll flash up a link for a pretty good quality but still Chinese, I guess it would be called a CO2 adapter. Uh, you could get those on eBay for about 10 or 15 bucks shipped to your door. And since this isn't available, that's going to be the solution here. So let's flash that up on the screen. Okay, very good. So what I did here is the reg on this tank is missing the bonnet. So this is what... A bonnet of a paintball tank looks like now the reason and so I guess also so it's this top part here right this is just a regular ninja paintball rag um, but this is missing the bonnet because it actually screws you screw off the bonnet and then screw the reg directly into the adapter so that's why it's missing that <clears throat> which is kind of cool because you know you've got your Air Force valve and then the threads come down a little bit and I, I feel like there's a tiny bit of plenum in here so you get that extra volume because if you are doing a regulated setup you want all the extra volume in front of the reg that you can get because that volume is available power to pop down the barrel so what i did was i ordered this reg now you can order regs um usually i you can find them on ebay sometimes on amazon that are rated for 4500 psi which is the tank pressure i don't know if you can See that it does say 4,500 PSI on it. Actually, all the reg bodies are the same. So even if it says 3,000 PSI, you can just change the burst discs to the appropriate um, levels and get it to, you can mount it on a 4,500 PSI tank, no problem. Um, but for this, I, I got it off JDS Airman. Honestly, the reg is definitely Chinese and it was kind of crappy. So it didn't have the, the advertised pressure output which for most guys, that's going to be hard to find. So I'll go through in a minute 
how we test reg pressure. But um, the way that these regs work is there is a piston inside here, okay? So the piston is like this, and you've got tank pressure coming out of the actual cylinder, and it's going to go up through here, and it's going to press against this o-ring, and it's going to push down. And these uh, kind of looks like a spring, but they're actually Belleville washers. And I brought out some Belleville washers to give you guys an example of what those are. So these, when stacked, they act as a spring, and they are super hard to press down. So um, this one, I think, is just for a standard paintball gun, so it's like 800 PSI. But to get it up to, I've got this regulated at 1850 or 1900 PSI, you're going to have to modify your, your Belleville shim stack arrangement, and you're going to have to actually add like shims to it probably also. Um, you can get Belleville washers for this size. Now, I don't have the size on hand, but you could probably do some Google Kung Fu and find it. Um, but you could get them from McMaster Car. So I have tons of them from just various paintball regs. So... You could pick up used paintball regs real cheap on eBay. Just, you know, buy a couple of them. You'll have all the Bellevilles and probably all the shims that you need. Um, but anyway, so I had to experiment with this and basically find the proper amount of Belleville washers and shims to get my desired output. And I knew I wanted to be probably around 2000 PSI. So um, ended up going on this Talon SS at 1850 or 1900 or so you can see that and what that allowed me to do was get a nice velocity of right around 750 feet per second with 18 grain pellets which is perfect for the purpose of this rifle which is short range pesting front and backyard maybe 20 to 40 yards tops and this thing's a dead ringer man it, it is I've had it since 2004 and it is just spot on when you shoot it so um, so that's kind of how I adapted this now I've got some other solutions for you to get a similar setup, and so they're going to be using the um, Chinese CO2 adapter I already mentioned, and um, you can either, let's get into testing regs. So if you're going to use an existing paintball reg, which you can modify to do, you're going to need some way to test the pressure. So the first thing you're going to need is a remote line with an on-off and you need a slide check because if there's pressure in there, you've got no way to vent it unless you've got the slide check to go Psh! Okay, so then connected to the end of this, so let's say you're using a, a paintball valve like this, it screws into this on-off, you crank it on, pressure starts coming out. So with this on here, now I can measure the pressure. Um, right now I have a 1500 PSI gauge on here, which is not enough to measure this and I would break this gauge if I used it, but I can put any gauge on here. So here's another 5,000 PSI gauge, I could just Teflon tape it and take this one out and put that one in. So that is one way you can use a paintball tank and a paintball reg and make your little own tester. Now that's just a paintball ASA and then the other end of a paintball remote line. And I can test my pressures and then vent it. And then you will have to degas your entire tank to, you know, start playing with the reg, obviously. So it's a tedious process. A better thing that you could do if you don't like tinkering and are maybe not as pneumatically and mechanically inclined is order a Ninja Flex reg. So let's pop an image of that up onto the screen. The Ninja Flex reg is a PCP reg. And it is adjustable. Uh, you'd want to get the 4500 PSI version, and then it comes with a little wrench. And make sure you read the manual because there are some caveats to adjusting against pressure. Um, <clears throat> but you can adjust it, and I think the one I had on the Condor that I sold, I want to say it was like, like 2000 to 2500 PSI, but they have varying brackets of of pressure ranges that you can get in those. So um, the way that you would do that is you would have a paintball tank. One thing about paintball tanks versus your standard Air Force tank, this has 5 eighths um, by, I think, 18 UNF threads. It's a standard, it's a US thread, I think. And the, the Air Force tanks actually have metric threads. It's like uh, 18 millimeter by 1.5 pitch. 
So be, be wary of that. So you'd need the correct reg to the correct tank that you're going to use. If you're going to buy a regular US made Ninja tank, it's the 5 8 UNF threads. So, um, so let's say you buy a Ninja tank. Um, another piece of information you need here is if you buy a Ninja tank, you can buy them from them without a reg on them. That would be the way to go. Otherwise, you are going to need a special reg tool, which I unfortunately don't have here in front of me, to show you that you would need to take off the reg because these things are on there pretty tight. But the way to go would be Ninja tank, PCP, uh, Ninja PCP Flex regulator. So now you don't have to, you know, mess around with Belleville washers and do doing all this testing. Um, and then CO2 adapter. And what I did to the, the one that I had was I removed the pin valve on my Ninja reg, okay, because when you press this down, that releases air. But to get a couple more cc's of volume, I removed the pin valve. It doesn't need it if it's a closed system because this, when you're hitting this valve, that's what's opening and releasing all the air. So I had this in there, and then I had the Chinese CO2 adapter, but there's a little shelf in there with a um, pin depressor. And if you take this out, and then drill out the adapter with like a 3 8 drill, you can get probably about three or four cc's of extra volume, which will help your velocity. So then it just makes it a straight flow system because now you're not, oh, this is always open and it's, you know, flowing right into the adapter. So that's the way I did it on the Condor. This is working great on this, um, as you could tell by the chrono numbers, but uh, hopefully this helps people out there who are either tinkerers or they um, want to somehow regulate their talon or condor. Um, again, if you watch my first video, which is bad quality, I, I wasn't using a very good camera, um, so the audio sucks, but um, that one I did have the Ninja Flex Reg and the um, uh, Chinese CO2 adapter drilled out, like I said, and it worked great. I was getting about almost 900 feet per second with 23 grainers. And then, so with this, and, and that was at 2600 PSI regulated. This is at like 1900 PSI regulated, and I'm still getting like 750 FPS with decently heavy 18 grain pellets. Um, I was getting about 735 or 740 with the 21 grain Barracudas. So um, anyway, I hope you guys liked this and it was helpful to you. Um, Try to put a lot of effort into going into detail here. So um, cheers, guys, and of course you can reach me at airshootist at gmail.com. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to help you. So thanks and have a great day. Bye.